Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the light cavalry of the French army, the chasseurs, and their more glamorous counterparts, the hussars. So as always with these Napoleonic Basics videos, we'll start off by looking at what actually was a hussar and a chasseur. And while we'll be looking specifically at them in the French army, in this case, a lot of the comments about hussars in particular, they can be applied across most European armies and also to an extent the British army as well. They were very much your quintessential light cavalrymen. One of their main roles would have been in scouting, so that's both trying to find the enemy, find their locations, their strengths, things like that, but also they would do counter scouting moves as well, I guess you could call it, and that would be trying to intercept enemy light cavalry, enemy hussars and chasseurs, and try and stop them doing the same, to try and stop them from finding the main body of the French army, or perhaps scouting out a favourable terrain, things like that. So it was a bit of a dual role there when it came to their light cavalry duties. And I'm mixing in both Hussars and Chasseur à Cheval into this to give the Chasseurs their full name, and that's because they very much did the same role. The Hussars just did it much better dressed. And this role led to two real key things about Hussars, especially in the French army. And that was one, that they had a lot more individuality than perhaps a line infantryman or even something like a heavy cavalryman. They were expected to operate either in small groups, maybe occasionally individually, probably not that often though. But it would be not uncommon for a Hussar regiment to be split into troops and for those troops to undertake various duties as well. So one of the key things for a Hussar, and also a Chasseur à Cheval, I should say, was a very high degree of individuality, of initiative. And I think this is really well represented in Black Powder by the use of the rule Marauder, which means that they're very self-reliant. They don't need to be around that command and control structure in order for them to be able to perform. And that's because they're a lot more individualistic thinkers than perhaps a rather plodding heavy cavalryman, as we might perhaps describe them. So it was a very different mindset from the other kinds of cavalry. In fact, uh, there was a General de Brac who wrote in the period when talking of a light cavalry officer, a man must be born a light cavalry soldier. No situation requires such an innate genius for war. The qualities which render a man superior, intelligence and willpower, ought to be found united in him. Left constantly to himself, exposed to constant fighting, responsible not only for the troops under his command, but also to those which he is protecting and scouting for. Every minute finds employment for his mental and bodily faculties. His profession is a rough one, but every day affords him opportunities for distinguishing himself, a glorious compensation which repays his toil so much the more, as it shows so much the sooner what he is worth. And the second part of this would mean that it would be the Hussars, that mostly came into contact with civilians through the land that they were passing. Now the French, in particular, they didn't have supply structures that other nations did, and that meant that they very much lived off the land. So that Hussar troop may go and see a local farmer to try and uh, buy or commandeer his chickens, and if that farmer were to have a comely daughter who may be attracted to a young, fit cavalryman in an absolutely incredible uniform, then, you know, these things happened. And while that's very much the image of the Hussar, the Chasseurs, perhaps less so. Their uniform was a lot more restrained. For the French, it was a very dark green, which is very nice. It kind of looks like a Dragoon uniform, but they uh, they wear shakos and not the helmet. Whereas the Hussars were in an absolute riot of colours. They were, Some were dressed head to toe in pale blue. Uh, others uh, would have a red top and uh, like a coat it's called a police uh, and they would have blue breeches on with those they're literally any combination of colors you can think of there were hussar regiments in the napoleonic world that had them so they very much uh, caught the public imagination uh, in the napoleonic wars and in fact later i think one of the best depictions of light cavalry and hussars is lady elizabeth butler who obviously made some fantastic napoleonic paintings but she did one of the Charge of the Light Brigade in the Crimean War. And in that you can see a, a very much post-battle 
Hussar uniform. It's a great painting, and um, I'll try and get it up on the screen now. And while I've got absolutely zero scientific evidence to back this up, I strongly believe that there are more paintings of Hussars than any other type of Napoleonic soldier. Maybe not more than there was of Napoleon, but of any type, specific troop type of the Napoleonic Wars. Which is great for me because it's allowed a lot of uh, images of paintings for me to illustrate this video with, more so than the miniatures. Now, I would normally try and get more miniatures on here, but with my new job, I found it very difficult to get to and from work where there's still light, and uh, I don't want to take pictures of them not looking their best, especially Hussars. I don't think they'd be very happy if I uh, took pictures of them not looking their best. So, I'm afraid you're just going to have to do with the contemporary paintings and perhaps the odd one that I've taken in the past. But that's enough excuses. Let's get back on to the subject of Hussars and Chasseurs. And the French were quite notorious for not really looking after their horses as perhaps as well as they should do. Now, this wasn't always the case. In fact, I read yesterday an account of a French hussar who, on the retreat from Moscow, clambered onto a burning cottage to pull the thatch off in order to feed his horse. Uh, it's, it's quite a remarkable story, really. They uh, were together throughout the entire Napoleonic Wars, and uh, I was quite sad to read at the end that uh, the horse was killed at the Battle of Waterloo and the rider was quite badly injured. But as I say, that was much more the exception than the rule. In fact, it was said often that in the peninsula, British soldiers would smell French light cavalry before they could see them because of the saddle construction used to rub the back of the horses quite badly. So they would soon get saddle sores and they would get infected in the Spanish heat. And so, you know, it would give off a really pungent smell of infected flesh. And that's what the British soldiers could smell from some distance. So you know on this channel we don't really go into uniforms very much. I think there's plenty of other channels out there that do that a lot better than I can. But I want to quickly talk about the equipment that French light cavalry would have. And, you know, largely it was the same equipment for most light cavalry units out there across the Napoleonic armies. So they would usually have a curved sabre, a light cavalry sabre it was called because it was designed especially for them. So unlike the straight-bladed heavy swords that the dragoons or the Karaziers would use, these were very quite surprisingly curved, actually. It was, when you see them in the flesh, it's surprising by how far they curve around. And just like with the Karaziers, they would charge with them directly in front of them, kind of like a lance or a spear, I guess. Um, but the curve would point down towards the ground, and that was designed to enter the body as the horsemen rode past them. They would turn their wrist and be able to extract the sword out again. So, as with the Karazi video, not particularly nice, but, you know, that's kind of what they were designed to do. Also, uh, they were very good for slashing, and they had surprising, particularly against targets below them, so that would be infantry on foot. And that really goes to another major role of the light cavalry, and really their role in battle. So we see in Black Powder, for instance, a light cavalry regiment only has six in hand-to-hand -hand if it's a normal-sized unit. It doesn't have any of the combat resolution buffs that maybe Dragoons or the Karaziers have. And that's because in open battle, they were not really that useful. Their main purpose, as we said earlier on, was for scouting or counter-scouting. The other thing they were really excelled at, though, were after the battle. They were great in the pursuit of a broken enemy. A formed enemy is, especially if they're infantry, is pretty much immune to cavalry. They can form a square or perhaps a battalion mass or something like that. A formation designed to stop them. The cavalry is fairly useless against them. All right, they've got carbines, but in a cavalry regiment, you've got perhaps three or 400 cavalrymen. If they're going to get into a musketry duel within six or 700 infantrymen, a strong battalion, who are obviously much be better at reloading and aiming because they're on foot, it's not going to end well for that light cavalry. So it was really against broken infantry that they were particularly good. And because they didn't have the weight of a Karazir or a Carabinier or even a Dragoon, they could gallop that much faster, that much farther. And it would be the light cavalry that would turn a retreat into a rout. 
And, you know, it's not just the regular light cavalry that would do this. They, there's a great reputation that the Cossacks have from the 1812 campaign. And that comes from them pursuing pockets of French troops that were retreating in ones, twos, threes, or half a dozen guys who were quite easy picking for light cavalry. So we've talked about the main uses of light cavalry and the fact that they weren't really that useful on the battlefield. Now, don't get me wrong, a light cavalryman is certainly better than no cavalryman. And in black powder, they're very good at either forcing infantry into squares or the thing that I quite like to do with them is once I force the infantry into squares with perhaps dragoons or carassiers, I then move up the hussars and they pin those enemy squares in place. They can't unpin because cavalry is too close, but it allows my carassiers and my dragoons to maybe go somewhere else on the board and uh, you know cause chaos over there. Another use that you can use for hussars as well is because of that marauder rule. You can use them in great outflanking, sweeping moves. Unfortunately, I find that when they get into combat, they're not necessarily always that effective. And I think that's really good because historically on the battlefield, they were of limited use. They were more, much more used in the run-up to a battle and perhaps afterwards. I think they could be used in quite a cool way if you're designing a scenario or if you're doing maybe a pickup battle. You could perhaps invent a mechanic that says if you've got more light cavalry units than your opponent, perhaps you can choose whether you deploy first or second or maybe go first or second, or maybe your opponent has to deploy first to decide who goes first. So I think a really good way of using light cavalry in war games and black powder is to really look at their effects before a battle. If you're playing in a campaign system, then you want to look at their effects after a battle as well. So again, if your army wins and you have unengaged light cavalry units, perhaps the number of uh, casualties that the opponent loses in the retreat is higher. Or perhaps if you lose and you've got unengaged light cavalry regiments, perhaps the number of troops you, you, you lose is lower because your light cavalry have screened the retreat of your infantry. Because of the reasons mentioned earlier on, and also just the sheer magnificence of their uniforms, the Hussars are often seen as the, the sort of public face of the Napoleonic Wars. And there's quite a few different medias that really represent Hussars really well. If you are interested in seeing Hussars getting an indication of their mindset and their uniforms, things like that, I can highly, highly recommend the film The Duelists, starring David Carradine and Harvey Keitel. Absolutely phenomenal. I think it's probably been seen by most of you, but if you haven't seen it, I would recommend rushing out and buying it on DVD or getting the uh, the download for it. It's a superb film about two hussars and, shall we say, their disagreement that takes place throughout the Napoleonic Wars. But it's an absolutely phenomenal film. If you haven't seen it, highly, highly recommended. 